Hi, I'm David. And I'm Esme. Welcome to the Sabre Personal Safety Academy. This is our safety and empowerment space to help you make it safe. We know that personal safety is personal, so we're here to help you with your personal safety plan. We want you to feel comfortable with it, and we want you to know how to use these products to best help you escape a dangerous situation. Let's start with preparation. If you can avoid the situation entirely, that's your safest best bet. And that starts with making yourself a hard target. So a soft target is when you're walking down the street, not engaged with your surroundings. You're really focused on something else mentally that you're thinking about, um, that you're more wrapped up into. Perhaps you're on your phone, you're listening to music, you're just not engaged. And the person looking to commit the crime sees that, sees that you're distracted and is looking to take advantage of that. So what do you do? You make yourself a hard target. Walk with your shoulders back, head up, engage with your surroundings, that in and of itself is likely to deter a potential threat. Next, you want to use when-then thinking. So you want to have a pre-planned response in mind so that in a dangerous situation, you don't react irrationally in a panic. If you use when-then thinking, you're more likely to be able to respond and use your personal safety tools you have planned. Distance is always your friend in personal safety. The threat their action is always going to be faster than your reaction. So you want to basically spread out that reactionary gap. Give yourself as much chance to respond as you can. So at minimum, we want to have you 12 feet away from a potential threat from a stranger when you're walking alone on the street. That requires them to take two steps and lunge towards you to get to you. Now, if they're running, you're going to need even more distance between you and them. So give yourself that ability with distance. Distance is your friend. Next, consider the buddy system. A companion is a built-in witness if you ever encounter a dangerous situation, and it extends beyond just human relationships or a friend. You can bring a dog with you, um, and this actually helps you become a hard target like David mentioned. We also have this practice called the 10 seconds to safety. It's for when you're arriving at a situation that allows you to pick out the safest spot, be aware of what's going on in that situation, and get to the destination safely. So what does that consist of? Pick the safe spot when you're arriving, scan the area. When, once you park your car, you elevate yourself to eye level. You wanna see what's between you and the door. As you're making your approach, scan the area as well. Be engaged with your surroundings at the door. And this is all, we're taking two steps at each of these destinations that I'm speaking of. At the door, take two seconds. Does it feel right? Look inside. Once you open the door, take another two seconds. Is everything in order? Is everything okay? Then proceed inwards. And, and you can use that 10 seconds to safety, those five intervals when you're leaving as well. And if you need to speed it up, perhaps you're a little bit closer, maybe it's six seconds to safety, but those things are done to help you get to and from safely. And then the next set of tips we'll go into is all about protection. So even if you do everything right from a preparation standpoint, you can still find yourself in a dangerous situation. Remember, that's not your fault, but we do have some tips to help you prepare if and when you encounter a dangerous situation. So going back to that hard target theme, you can use loud verbal commands while looking your threat directly into the eye to discourage them from pursuing the, the, the attack. So simple words like stop or phrases like, I don't know this person, dial 911, leave me alone. That in and of itself may discourage the individual from pursuing, proceeding with the attack to give you the opportunity to escape. As for personal safety products, there are three great options. Pepper spray, stun guns, personal alarms. Starting with pepper sprays and gels, the biggest advantage is the protection at a safer distance. Why go hands on with an attacker when you can protect yourself from up to 10 feet or, or more from that attacker? Um, in addition to that, they don't require pain to incapacitate. So if the person's under the influence of alcohol, drugs, this will cause involuntary eye closure once that ocular area is contacted. They're legal for sale in all 50 states. It doesn't require size or strength to use. And you can even protect yourself against multiple attackers at the same time. And lastly, it's a proven product. This is used by police forces globally. Then we have stun guns. While they do require that you make contact with the individual, they can be quite intimidating. But again, you, you, that distance that you get with pepper spray, you do not get with a stun gun. So in order to cause pain, you actually have to make contact with that individual. And again, stun guns do rely upon pain 
to incapacitate your attacker. They don't take away vision like the pepper spray does. So if they don't feel pain, this may not be effective and you don't have the ability to protect yourself against multiple threats. Then we have personal alarms. The nice thing about personal alarms is one of the things attackers don't like is witnesses. So this loud sound that personal alarms have, that in and of itself may discourage a, a potential threat or an attack because people are gonna look in your direction. That loud sound makes people witnesses and that could discourage a potential attack from occurring as well. So the next thing you wanna do is make sure you get familiar with your product. Whether you choose a personal alarm, a pepper spray, or a stun gun, or even all three, make sure you get familiar with it and can reach it out of your bag or a pocket in a dark room um, before you need to use it. They can and should be tested before you actually need them in a dangerous situation. So as Esme was saying, speaking of reaching for the product, it needs to be accessible. So whether it's a bear spray that's on your hip, a pepper spray that's attached with a clip to perhaps your, your hip as well, a bag, a purse, you have to have it accessible. Perhaps it's a running unit that you have in the palm of your hand, or even if you put it on your keychain, you need to be able to get to it immediately when facing a dangerous threat. And you need to be able to, to be familiar with the product, like Esme said, to protect yourself. And the last tip we have for you today is to trust your instincts. They usually do a great job at telling you whether you're in a dangerous situation or could potentially be approaching one. By being prepared, considering your personal safety product options, and trusting your instincts, you'll be more likely to react quickly and escape to safety in a dangerous situation. Millions of people trust and purchase Sabre products every year. Be safe, go confidently, and trust your instincts. They're usually right.